Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for the Council of Economic Advisors Small Business Subcommittee meeting. This, uh, this committee uh, was sort of re rehabbed last spring um, with you know, the understanding that we need to continue to have these conversations with the small businesses throughout Needham, your, your needs certainly are very different than those of much larger businesses. And um, while I go around and I you know, pop in and I see a lot of you one-on-one -on -one and um, email with you, it's always great to have a group together to brainstorm and share ideas. Um, and then we also had a recent meeting of the Needham Business Alliance. Uh, as you know, it's under the umbrella of the Charles River Regional Chamber, which recently changed its name. Hold on one second, there's an attendee coming in. Let's see who that is, pop them over. Um, and we were talking about the holidays and what was coming up and we decided that you know, we needed to have a meeting pretty soon to start talking about <laughs> what was gonna be happening for fourth quarter. So um, here we are. And so uh, I thought it would be first helpful if we went around. I don't think everybody knows each other or perhaps you do, but if uh, you can, actually, I'm gonna just give me two seconds. We've got two more people. We've got Karen from Proud Mary and we've got Dave Becker from Sweet Basil. Hold on. What? <laughs> I haven't seen Dave on a Zoom ever. Be thrilled to be on a Zoom with him. Yes. Wow. I know. I need to. I need some pesto. I need to co go in. Right. She bet he did. It's making me hungry already. <laughs> so I thought it would be uh, helpful if we went around and did introductions. So I will um, introduce myself, and then I'll pass it on to someone else. And if then if you can call on someone else, so we can just keep this moving along, that would be great. So. As you all know, I'm Amy Halson. I am the Economic Development Manager for the Town of Needham, and I'm going to pass it over to Lise Elcock. Hi, everyone. I know most of you. Um, so I am the Membership Director for the Charles River Regional Chamber, but I'm also on the Needham Economic Advisory Council. It's I'm beginning my first full term, and I'm thrilled to be part of the Retail Subcommittee. Um, and I'll just uh, pass it over to the other person on this committee, Virginia. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Virginia Fleischer. I'm a volunteer on the Council of Economic Advisors a Committee and the Subcommittee for Small Business. I'm a longtime Needham resident, um, and I'm just here to listen and try to help out with ideas to keep supporting the small businesses. My background is in commercial real estate investment management, So, um, but i um, just glad to be with everybody this morning. So I'll pass it along to Eileen. I'm Eileen Baker from Proud Mary. Um, I don't really know what else to say about myself, to be honest with you. But thank you for putting this meeting together. It, I'm looking forward to what we have to say. Oh, I have to pass it on. I'll pass it on to Liz. Hi, guys. I am Liz Hay. I own Bar 3 in Needham. Um, and I will pass it on to Bob. Good morning. Uh, Bob Stark from the Closet Exchange. Business been here since 1991. Happy to be in, in this meeting. Jerry and I have to make sure that you ladies keep us in mind rather than just people who are in the back getting the stuff that you need. And I'll pass this on to Jerry. Hey, I'm Jerry Michelson from Michelson Shoes. Um, and I will pass this on to Virginia. Oh. So I already went, so I'll pass it back to Lori. Oops. <laughs> um, I'm Lori, um, and I am one of the owners of Secondhand Rose of Needham. Uh, I raised my kids in Needham, um, but now don't live in Needham, but love going to, to work every day. And I love smelling um, sweet basil. We're right across the street from sweet basil, as you know. So I'll pass it over to Dave, and I'll be in later, Dave, for some pesto and bread to bring to a friend in, Needham, in New York. Oh, cool. Uh, my name is Dave, and I'm from Sweet Basil on Great Plain Ave, and I've been there. It'll be uh, 22 years. Wow. March. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I love Needham. <laughs> like, I feel like if, I, if I'd done what I did anywhere else, it probably wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. 
Um, anyway, I'm not sure who else to pass it on to because I only see a couple of you on my phone. But, um, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll put it back on mute. <laughs> How about Karen? This is Karen. Hi, I'm uh, Eileen's business partner in Proud Mary. Um, happy to be here. And I'm having a little trouble with the audio and the video, but I'll pop up with my face shortly, I hope. <laughs> Great. And it looks like we have somebody joining us by phone, 781-223-3668. Who are you? And welcome. Hi, it's, if you can hear me, it's Rich from Needham Music. Oh, hi, Rich. How are you? Good. I'm driving, so I'll be mostly listening. Great. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. All right. So we've got- we have Megan. We have Megan. Oh, I'm sorry, Megan. Oh my gosh, Megan. That's I'm okay. so sorry. No worries. Um, so I own the Needham General Store and also the Dunkin' Donuts in Needham. Uh, we bought in January of 2020. So you can see that we, we had a real good entry into Needham immediately <laughs> to COVID and now a labor shortage. So we love being in the town. It's a great, great town to do business in. All right. And it looks like we've also got um, Addie from Treat. And it looks like we lost Eileen. <laughs> so if Eileen pops in again, we'll, we'll yeah, just we keep... Yeah, having a little trouble. But, so. okay. okay. All right. So is it... I'm a sorry, D. is it I believe Addie it's or Adi. I think it's a D. A D? Hi. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, Adi. Hey, good morning. All right. I'm actually writing that down so I will ph phonetically so I remember. In the like future. eight. Me zero. too. Me too. <laughs> thank you. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. So, um, before we start talking um, and, and sharing ideas and brainstorming about the upcoming holiday season, I wondered if anybody had any um, sort of just general thoughts or feedback or tips on things that um, have been working to increase sales or get more foot traffic or, or anything. If anybody just wants to just sort of a, a, a free for all sharing um, before we start getting into the, the details of fourth quarter. Any volunteers? Go ahead, Laurie. So um, I think just in general, COVID has really been wonderful in just terms of creating more foot traffic in town. I definitely think that there's more. Um, we benefit from having UPS, you know, next door to us. So that that's great. But um, we, we put uh, racks out of our store every day and we have, you know, balloons that, you know, refillable balloons. And um, I feel that that, you know, every day, it's, it amazes me how many new people come into our store that have never been in before. So, you know, I would strongly recommend, you know, if the more the people can put either some sort of a sign outside or just something, just it, it it makes the sidewalks look more alive and more interesting, I think, for people driving and walking by. So that's been really helpful to us. We are also going to put in another um, sign that we used to have hanging out, um, uh, you know, going not, not, you know, not this way on the, you know, on the side of the, because we're, we're hard to be seen because of the tree. And, st and stuff right outside our door. Um, but anyway, I would just, putting stuff outside, it's amazing to me how many people come in that have never been in on a, da on a daily basis. So I would recommend that for anyone who doesn't do that. Lauren, if you need help uh, navigating the uh, sign approval process, just give me well, a I'm show. Put this on, I, well, okay. Let, let's talk offline after. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to echo Lori's point about having um, outside things, um, we've noticed a bigger um, rise in traffic when we are, a lot of community groups have been asking us to fundraise outside of our stores. And, you know, we have a protocol of what they have to follow. They can't approach people and all of that. And everyone signs the, you know, confirms that they're going to stay within the guidelines. Um, but I feel like that's brought in a lot more traffic and just like being part, you know, part of the community. So whether it's a poppy drive or the Boy Scouts selling their popcorn, I feel like that's been a good, um, not only to connect with the community, but also to bring in traffic. 
Anybody else want to offer any feedback or tips? Um, oh, sorry. I have some feedback and I know Amy, you and I have talked about this before um, and we've kind of hit roadblocks with it um, in the past, but something that would have been and would be awesome for us to utilize is the green space across the street from my studio um, to do some pop-up classes out there to build some awareness, um, to let people know, you know, what we do and to maybe make the people that don't feel comfortable yet coming in the studio to take a class feel more comfortable um, participating outdoors. And we've just, we've tried and tried and we've only been able to do it once. And it was when we teamed up with a nonprofit to, to run it. Um, this would be a, like, I, I wouldn't be charging for these classes. These would be free classes. Um, but that's just some feedback that I really wish the town of Needham would be a little bit more supportive on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard having a fitness studio right now. <laughs> That's a great idea. I mean, again, the, you know, going back to like when there was talk about food trucks and things and like the more that the, the more people that there are, I know I don't own a, a, a restaurant, but the, like the, even the outdoor dining spaces. And I know that there's a free, I think like a generic one over by rice barn, the more, the more we can make ourselves cool and, and funky, you know, and encourage people to come downtown. I mean, I think that that's a great idea to have stuff. The more stuff that's going on in town, the better it's gonna be for everybody. Um, you know, I've said that, that I, I'm assuming that you're not able to use that space because of the nonprofit. We have that amazing venue in town hall and, and it's impossible. I haven't looked into it recently, but when I used to be a booking agent, I used to want to try and book performers there. It was too expensive. There were so, there was so much red tape. It was impossible to get that space utilized. And that would be just a, a perfect opportunity to bring more bodies into the downtown area. So I think it's crazy that the town, the town stops things like using that green space. Okay, that's really helpful feedback. Anybody else want to share any tips or feedback? Bob? You're, you're muted, Bob. There we are. Yes, thank there you. you. Go. Uh, I, I heard what Liz had to say, and uh, I stopped by and get a coffee at the end of the day down at the Dunkin' Donuts up by the high school. And I noticed that that um, the studio down there, the women's studio, uh, was open on Saturday, but now they, they're empty. The spaces, they've moved down, which is kind of awkward. And I have noticed because of the adjacency of our store to Greensfield that uh, the Y on occasion holds exercise classes out there. Um, so, you know, I know the town has a, a push-pull about whether Greensfield is truly within their orbit or not, but maybe that's something that Amy could take a peek at that might help all of us. Sure, be happy to do that. Okay. All right. Before we move on to talking about the upcoming holiday season, does anybody else have anything they want to share in general? Parking, outdoor dining, traffic. Parking, parking, the biggest complaint I get is the, um, I, and I've said it before, that they wish that we could do credit cards. Okay. That's like, probably comes up to me like six times a day and um, I'm always giving people quarters to go to Harvey's, you know, or something like that. So um, that would, I would say the biggest issue with parking. They don't mind paying. It's not, it's not about paying, it's the inconvenience of having to have the quarters with them. Right, right. I will say that the meter, just giving some feedback to the people who do walk the beat, they are lovely. Like they do go above oh, yeah. and beyond. They walk into our store to say, whose car is this? You know, do you know, they, they go, they're lovely human beings. They and are, they're awesome. Beautiful. You're right, Lori, yeah. they are. So it's just, not, I don't think people mind paying, do you, Lori? I feel like they just wish. No, if, no or they, they just forget. 
there was a white van on the holiday uh, Monday because we were open on Monday and there was a big oversized white van that was parked outside my store all day. And I when she and it was so funny because I had said, just said out loud, you know, I, I wonder whose car this is because it's kind of a bummer that they were there all day. And then with that, she showed up. And I knocked on her thing window and I said, hey, I said, I wasn't rude, but I was like, hey, you know, if you could maybe be mindful. I said, parking is really tough in town. I know it's a holiday, but you know, we're here all day, da, da, da. And she's like, well, it was a holiday. And yeah, well, yeah, I know, but you know, if you've been out in front of my store literally all day, just be mindful of it. Maybe, you know, it's two hour parking. I don't know who she was. She said she was teaching a class or something either teaching a class or taking a class, I'm not sure, above me, but. Um, if anybody notices um, any cars parked for, you know, an extended period of time on the street, um, you can certainly feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it's always helpful to have a description of the car in the exact location because I've got, you know, a direct line into the Needham Police Department and I give them the head up. Uh, um, yeah, you know, the, the whole point of meters is to promote turnover so that people don't park there all day and the longer term parking of course is available in the several town lots um, around Needham Center and, and recently um, our and a different subcommittee of the Council of Economic Advisors did a walking tour of Needham Center and one of the things that we noticed is that the parking signs really aren't all that visible so if you're from outside of Needham and you don't know where to go you really have to look for the signage. And so that's something that, um, that's, on, that's on our list and our radar to, uh, to look into because we need to make it as, as obvious as possible uh, for, for people to be able to find their way. It's not intuitive uh, necessarily for people to think that they should just you know, go down Chapel Street and, and pull behind all of those uh, businesses there. So, um, okay. All right, unless anybody has anything else, we can uh, roll right into the upcoming holiday season. Okay. All right, so um, you should have all received by now that there will be a spooky walk that is coming up on Saturday the 23rd that's being organized by the town's Park and Recreation Department. If you haven't received a notice about that, uh, let me know and I will make sure that you get the notice right away. Um, you might've gotten it twice, and um, apologies for clogging up your inbox, but I always think uh, that better to get the people, people the notice twice than, than not at all. Um, but that's gonna be happening and it's gonna be you know, very controlled this year. So we don't have you know, huge throngs and crowds of people um, heading into Needham Center all at once. So it's, um, it's a great way to connect with potential customers. I know that, you know, you're not going to necessarily have people coming in as, as the kids are trick-or-treating. They're not going to come in and necessarily buy a gift or buy a pair of shoes or, you know, order takeout, but it, it's a great way to increase your awareness. And, and, you know, oftentimes you hear from folks saying, I didn't even know that there was a you know, fill in the blank um, on, on the Send a Great Plain Ave or on Chapel Street, that sort of thing. So um, mark your calendars for that. And then we are also working on plans for the uh, traditional blue tree lighting, which will take place um, the week after Thanksgiving. So that's going to be on Saturday the 6th. Um, bless you. And, and more details on that to come. There will not be um, the regular type of um, programming that has taken place in the past um, in Powers Hall uh, because of concerns about having too, too many people congregate indoors, um, we were, we're gonna keep everything outside this year. So uh, we're still hammering out details on, on all of this. So more on that to come. Um, but I wanted to talk to you folks. I know a lot of efforts have been made in the past. There's been holiday strolls. There's been, um, you know, certainly the last year, the chamber conducted the 100 day campaign for um, Shop Local Needham. And so I wanted to um, you know, talk to you folks about any ideas or um, feedback you had, what worked and what didn't previously for the holidays. Um, and you know, do we wanna do another you know, passport program? Liz Hay was so great to spearhead that effort earlier this summer and it increased a lot of awareness for other businesses. And I'm wondering if there's interest in doing something like that again this holiday season. 
Um, a couple people who could not make this morning's meeting did reach out and share some feedback, which I will share with you. Um, Bert and Sandy of um, Crown Jewelers did say that, you know, increasing the uh, sort of the holiday festive lighting down that end of Great Plain Avenue would be appreciated. Um, as you know, that end of Great Plain Ave, actually both ends of Great Plain Ave um, are slated to uh, get the upgrades to the streetscape that the original middle portion of Great Plain Ave, but that's not going to happen until summer of 2023. So we don't have as many street lamps down there, but you know, certainly there are things that can be done to make it more festive and more inviting for folks to um, wander down the street there. And then um, Jay Spencer, owner of French Press, got um, in touch to share some ideas. He said, a few thoughts, an ugly sweater stroll um, some sort of shop dine event where customers either buy or wear an ugly sweater, which is kind of fun. That's and then an, app, an apple or pumpkin feature event before Thanksgiving, restaurants feature their favorite dish, retailers sell associated products. Uh, Thanksgiving meals, directory of restaurants either open on Thanksgiving or offering meals or meal kits. Uh, a luminary stroll, always a popular event. I know that that's been done in the past as well. And then a week of gifts, each retailer or restaurant features a different gift for seven days that a customer can purchase, must be advertised before Thanksgiving intensively and starts on Black Friday. Um, and he said, we need to be mindful of not offering discounts and focusing on building a vibrant community where people go to retailers and restaurants, keep people walking around town to spend their money locally. So anybody have, uh, you know, Anything that they'd like to share, any feedback on any of the ideas I just shared or any thoughts? Yeah, I'd like to say um, one of the things that would be beneficial to us is to not just have it be like downtown Needham. You know, I know we talked about during the, um, the 100 day event, which was great. I think it got a lot of people out and into other stores that aren't just downtown. Um, and I think even with a passport program or something like that, if, if it's like getting into more, um, more areas or like this week, be sure you shop in this area. I know we had talked about that at one point during the 100 day like challenge. It was one of the ideas was like doing it by streets and that sort of thing. Um, but again, I think his Jay's point of saying, let's not discount, let's just get people in. I mean, we have, for the general store alone, we have people that are still coming in for the very first time. Um, and so, you know, I feel like for, for speaking from us, it's, it's harder to not be right downtown. Um, and also with the passport program, um, Liz, I didn't, I don't know if we missed that, but the last time, but we'd love to participate in that both on um, Duncan and the general store, because I think that, that those are really great ways to um, to get people out. And if we could do something similar to um, the, the, whole, the idea of giving a, um, a prize, like I said, I'd be happy to donate again, like we did before with the 100 day challenge. And I think that got a lot of engagement with people, you know, pulling the prizes. And I think something like that is fun. I don't know who would have the bandwidth to take that on right now. I, I'm saying it knowing that I don't have the time to, um, you know, the labor shortage has been really hard. In our stores, we're open, you know, from six to seven, seven days a week. So um, that's a, another piece of it. Um, and another thing I just want to kind of put out there um, is that I've heard a lot of, and from some of the vendors that I work with as well, that there's going to be a real toy shortage this year. Um, and so having people shop early and encouraging people to shop early, literally sitting around like Disney dolls right now that I ordered way too many of to see how many could come in. So um, anyway, I, I just think getting people out there to shop early, especially this year, given all of the um, lack of product that you're hearing might be an issue um, would be important. So that's my thoughts. I think Megan's right about the shop early thing would be really good. Like if we could focus, definitely focus on small business Saturday, like to get people buying their stuff as soon as possible. Like we're sitting on inventory that again, like same as Megan said, we ordered more than we normally would up front because we know we can't reorder things. And then there's also a situation where there's things I ordered that are not coming in. You know what I mean? So it would be good to get a better position like on what our stock is so that we can figure out what we need when we're scrambling towards the end of the um, season. Um, so if there is a way that we can get get it started early, that would be great, I think. 
I'm like looking at Nordic wraps in my basement. There's like hundreds of them. So whoever wants one, we have them. <laughs> Come get them. <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, one of the challenges too is putting, putting, I don't want to say burden is the wrong word, but putting um, the retailers, um, I guess the burden of, of putting the burden of the re on the retailers to get all this done because there is a lack of um, help and um, we are coming into a really, really busy season. So it's, um, I, I don't know if there's any kind of, budget for the you know the town that's going to allow more advertising I'm, I'm just not sure and especially not being there it's hard for me um you know physically being there all the time so um you know it's, it's just a little tricky you know the passport as liz knows was a, it's a huge undertaking it's a lot a lot of work um and i just think in in terms of like the holiday season coming up it's it's going to be really hard to pull something off like that um but I think shopping, you know, trying to get the word out as early as possible on social media or other areas might help. Um, I just don't know um, exactly how to get that going. A question that may, I, I, I don't have high schoolers in town, but um, something that we've done, uh, who did in, in Concord was that they, the, the high school students have to get volunteer hours. And um, so a group was put together to like people who are entrepreneurial or wanted to start a small business. And they um, had a group of volunteers that helped with getting the word out about small business. So if we wanted to look into that again, I don't have a contact. It's just a suggestion that maybe they would have time that they want to fill for their, you know, college applications or whatever to say we're, we're you know, during you know, I, I, I even hesitate to say post pandemic because I don't feel like we're even there yet, but uh, mid pandemic, sort of end of pandemic and labor shortage, this is what I did in my community to help. Again, I don't have a contact there, but that might be a good place to start to see if, and they, they're all on the TikTok and all, <laughs> all the other things that are, um, that are really hot right now and the reels, I, I don't even, I, I can't. <laughs> It's so. time consuming to do. It's, it's yeah, yeah. They, the kids can do it in like three seconds, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If they were able to go in and say, All right, here is a group of stores, everyone can put sign up to you know, kind of like we had Mike go in, um, last year, my brother, and make the videos in the stores. And it was like, All right, who's who's around? What What's my timing? How can we make that happen? Um, Again, I don't have him or many, I don't have a lot of help at all. So it's hard to, to volunteer that. But if, if we were to put a list together of like, here's all the stores they're gonna hit and just let them know what they, you want them to go in a highlight. And then that goes to the Needham Chamber page or the Needham 100 or whatever, that Shop Die Needham or whatever it is. Um, and it just gets engagement. And I think, you know, maybe those kids aren't gonna be necessarily shopping in the store. Um, but would would they be like, all right, here's what I want to get for my mom from Proud Mary, or here's what I want to get for my sister at the general store, you know, like, here's something I saw, you know, my mom's been dying for a Prada bag, so I'm going to get it at one of the consignment shops, like, kind of just narrow, zoom, you know, have them focus in on what, what do you, what item do you want to focus on for your store, just to. Mm. Great suggestion. I'm just going to jump in for a sec. Uh, a couple comments on the, on the high school kids. Uh, definitely trying to grab the drama department kids. <laughs> could be even more exciting because uh, they could be very creative. Um, the whole talk about uh, offering no discounts, very, very true because there's no, with lack of supply, there's no need for to mark things down for, for retailers, just generally speaking, because we can't get anything in the first place. Um, but that... All these programs are wonderful, but it comes down to trying to get partnering with someone in the community who um, has enough of an audience. So like in Lexington here, sometimes we, we something called the Lexington Mavens, which is a group of moms online on Facebook uh, and finding that right group in Needham, which I don't know what it is because I don't live there because I live up here in Lexington. Um, that was the biggest thing that got us an audience for a holiday event. I don't know if it's a, a youth group, uh, not a youth group, but like a parent, uh, like five and under group, uh, PTAs. Um, they might be looking for a give back too. And maybe that gets us over the hump to get that built in traffic. 
Um, but that, those are the things that have, we're always missing is, is finding that built-in audience that, that will come out as opposed to just preaching to the choir. Everyone says, oh, geez, I love local. I want to shop local. I want to do all my stuff local, but I can't find X, Y, and Z. So therefore I go online and that sucks. Um, but finding that built-in group could be the key to our success. And I don't know what it is. So Great point. I feel like Needham has very active social media, the Needham Mass page and then the Needham Parents page. However, I, I, I hesitate. I don't know if it's against like the group rules to be like, come to our store for this special. Like, I don't know. That's the only thing I, I think it's a great point. I just don't, again, know who that is exactly. And I hesitate to post on those pages about. I think it is supposed to be, you're not supposed to advertise on. Right. Yeah, you need a mass won't allow it. You'll hear yeah. from, um, I forget who the moderator is. You're not, you're the Needham not. Parents page, though, um, has been really helpful in terms of like certain things that we've posted in the past. So you might want to reach out to the Needham Parents Facebook page. But I guess even to say, be sure you guys follow the Shop Dine Local or whatever platform if we're able to execute that on those pages to say we need to, you know, just to push all the businesses that way. Right. So we, um, we had a challenge, you know, we did the hundred day challenge and we got a lot of traction from a smaller group of people that really used that. Um, Megan, you were one of them. Um, also simply stated was one of them. And, um, I think 80, I think treat did the gingerbread houses. And I heard that you sold out. I think that was you. Um, so I heard that the products that were placed on that page did do really well. People went to those locations for that specific product. Um, but then we have some merchants that are doing unbelievable Instagrams and we keep telling them to repost, to share on our shop dine local, but it just seems to be a hurdle to get them over to the shop dine local page. Um, we also, Tiffany does just a great job of sharing any of you who post on Instagram, because it's so easy, she shares through the Chamber platform. Um, so, you know, anything you're doing, we're trying to amplify. Um, but we really do only have that shop, dine, local. We sometimes, if it's community or oriented, I will then post on Needham Mass since I'm a resident, if it doesn't cross into the business line. And then there is Needham Mass business, which isn't doesn't have as many followers, but you can always... I don't think enough people know about that. I think more people know about Shop Dine Local. So we would love increased activity. We would amplify it through, you know, our efforts of emailing and what we do. Also for all of you, um, we do have a Find It Local directory that we curate. Um, if you sell Needham or Newton or any type of uh, town merchandise, we amplify that through the Chamber directories. Um, so we do have some options, but really Chamber doesn't have as strong of a community reach as it does a business to business reach, but we're happy to help in any way we can. I think the point that I was trying to get at was we need a champion that's not a business owner yeah. in, in the community. And that's what we end up finding with, we found one of these, these influencers, influencers, influence moms uh, that, that really just took us over that hurdle. And I don't know who that would be in the community. Mm. Uh, there's, there's a lot I could talk to some of my customers a lot of them shop in here like some of them have like multi-level uh, multi-level marketing kind of um businesses and I don't know I'm Liz I'm sure a lot of them take classes with you too right yeah yeah I can I can put some feelers out too um yeah, yeah I've got I've got some ideas in my head as well <laughs> yeah I can talk to some of the people I think might be willing to help for me i feel like consistency is important like until you mentioned shop dine local please i forgot like i don't post there like i just feel like we we come up with new ideas and new ideas and so then i get confused i'm i'm old so I'm trying, I'm winging it, you know, on Instagram. Am I supposed to do hashtags? Am I supposed to do at signs? And so like, I forgot shop, dine, local. I do tag the chamber every time I post a product, but I don't, I don't, I forgot about shop, dine, local. So like whatever we do, I just feel like if we consistently like going back to the, the the list that you were reading, Amy, like, I feel like, okay, maybe if we take like two things, like maybe two strolls, for example, 
and that be like our theme is or if we do if we do the same thing by season then people will maybe know this is our thanksgiving stroll this is our holiday stroll this is our spring stroll but i feel like if we come up with different programs all the time for me in my old brain it's confusing just so we've got the we've got the blue tree lighting on um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, so it's going to be the sixth. I know in the past there has been um, efforts to coordinate, you know, a holiday stroll prior to the lighting, and I understand that the the demographics, you know, that the blue tree lighting is primarily attracts young families. That's not to say that you know people of all ages don't come, but generally speaking, and that people with kids in tow aren't going to be out shopping. So I guess my first question is, are you folks interested in having some kind of coordinated um, shopping, dining event, you know, either on the same day as the Blue Tree Lighting, since we'll already have a lot of people in town, or a, a different day? Um, we don't want to push it too far out because we obviously we're just talking about wanting to get people to come earlier. So the following weekend is just way too far out. Um, the weekend of Thanksgiving is tricky because, um, I mean, it's, it's small business Saturday, so we could do something on small business Saturday. Um, but is that, you know, if we're doing it, if we have a sort of a holiday theme to it, doing it before the blue tree lighting. So I'm just sort of throwing it out there, um, asking for folks feedback. I like the idea of a stroll. I just, um, I'm just trying to get a handle on the restrictions. What can we do in terms of the town? Like what, what would they allow? What would they not allow? Is there anything we can add to it? Like any kind of entertainment or, um, I don't know where they're at right now. Um, and do you mean restrictions as far as, um, gathering the numbers of people? Yeah, that, and is there anything else we can add to a stroll just to make it a little more lively? Um, you know, certainly I think um, any kind of entertainment, um, you know, if you had carolers walking around or if you had something going on, but are, are you thinking it would be the same day as the blue tree lighting, that the stroll would be sort of earlier in the day, or would this be a completely separate I'm thinking day? probably separate, but I just, okay. I don't know, gener you know generally what the restrictions for the town would be, like how far we could go with like introducing different types of things instead of just a stroll to, you know, just to make it a little more lively. I, I think that doing it the same day as a blue white is too close. I think there's an, there should be more of an emphasis on small business Saturday. Personally, mm -hmm. I think people mm -hmm. naturally are inclined to support local businesses on that day, at least based on how our experience for the past three years, we've always had really, really great small business Saturdays. Um, I don't know if American Express is doing anything this year that we can like take advantage of that um, and then put our own emphasis on it somehow. Um, and then, so if that's the case, then I think like December 6th is a little too close to that, if that makes sense. So do we do something even, well, it's probably too late to do something even sooner, but I do think like we do have a built-in audience already on Small Business Saturday. And like if it's an, like every customer that comes in on a day is always like making it a point to shop local that maybe we just like enhance that somehow mm -hmm. the thing that was good about the passport is that was like we used it as our kickoff and then like this is when we did it during the holidays we use small business saturday as the kickoff to holiday season for people to get involved and support small businesses and then it went through to i think it was right before i don't remember karen if it was right before or right after christmas um Christmas Eve, do you remember? Um, I think it was Christmas Eve. Yeah, so that people had up until Christmas Eve to shop in all these places and they really got into it. Like, so I know we keep talking about the passport. I don't know if that's the particular answer, but maybe something that could be like kicked off on Small Business Saturday and bring us through to, um, you know, to Christmas Eve. I also just say Hanukkah's oh. early this year. So I feel like the, timing of that is I think it ends on um I just looked it up I think it ends on December 6th so this is even if even if we push that's what I'm wondering like do we want to do something for a small business um <clears throat> in like be uh you know thank thanksgiving like um 
could there be a push from the chamber or the town? You guys did such a great job with the, you know, be kind to our lack of employees. That was, I, I didn't see that in any of the other towns that we own Duncan's. And that was, you know, do we do something like, let's thank our small businesses for keeping us going during the thankfulness in the month of November. And we get people thinking about shopping really early. I mean, I don't know, it's already and the 13th. It's like thank and giving. If we somehow yeah. put the two of those Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is November, but, but giving is December. Like somehow, I don't know, I'm not a marketing person, but somehow. But I, I just think it would be great if we could, if the town could put on, and again, I don't know, it's already the 13th of October, so I don't know how quickly we could execute like the month of giving or the month of something. I just think with that, with small business Saturday and Hanukkah being so early, it's, I have to agree I with the all to December. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Edie. Oh, hi. Sorry. Um, I have to agree with the push to kind of extend this season and, and maybe jump off of Thanksgiving or Small Business Saturday. Um, I think what was so powerful about the 100 day challenge is that people had time um, and there was this build up and people got on board um, in what um, Gerald had said is like there's something so powerful that from the community speaking as opposed to the businesses um, and I saw a lot of traction with you know w the difference between the response when a business posts something and then a customer posts something online is huge so I think the power in getting the community involved in sharing and posting for those small businesses, whether it's um, a gift item that they found or something that they ate or a class that they went to, um, what I have noticed is that gets a much bigger response and there's a wider spread from it coming directly from a customer as to it seeming like a promotion from the business. So if there's a way to you know, incentivize or encourage or promote, um, you know, need a residence or, you know, the communities that shop here to speak for us. That is so huge. Um, and I think that that's what was really powerful, again, about that 100 day challenge is the shopping season is long. It will start in November, most likely. So maybe it's a small business season or uh, an extended, you know, use holiday stroll, but it might not have to be one day. It could be something that encompasses this season, whether it's a passport or, you know, a long-term stroll or a photo contest that's, you know, um, shoot a picture of an item or something that you found. Um, and there could be categories in that will promote uh, the community sharing, which just personally, I have seen a lot of success with. Um, I don't know if anybody else has seen that as well. To, to go off of the um, like the whole passport idea, and, and I know it was it was a huge undertaking, and, and Jerry, you're amazing for the layout and everything that you supported us with. So thank you. Um, and and I heard the feedback from our last call, um, and one of the things that I think has stuck with me was like there are so many amazing businesses in Needham, um, and if there was a way to like group them in a way so it's like a passport program for certain types of businesses so like you can kind of like pick your passport um i mean i'm i'm more than happy to to take something like that on honestly um those are the kind of things that i that i enjoy doing and i've, I've got a really great team of people here that could support with that um but i do agree with addy about like it like getting the community involved um, a little bit more. And I think if there's a way to do it like in a, a digital way, as opposed to the paper. Um, I agree with that, absolutely. Yeah, then, you know, and I, I don't know how you guys would wanna do it, but even if it was like, you know, if there was like a, a fitness genre, you know, a, a restaurant genre, a clothing genre, something like that, um, for the passports, if there's a way to, to support in that way, I'm more than happy to, to work with someone and take that on. Liz, do you think though that like, not even, not so much for, for retail, but for someone like you, like if, if somebody is a bar person, they're a bar person. Like, are they also, gonna, um, do you know what I mean? I don't know if that's, so I that think that there's a bar category more than ours. Yeah. So I think it's interesting you say that. So I think that there's, 
something to be said about, um, we talk a lot about this now about like not competing with other fitness studios, right? In, in this space that we're in, because we're all in the same boat. Um, and I think a lot of the fitness studios in the area complement one another really nicely. Like I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, like let's put another bar studio <laughs> with me, but they're, I don't mean that. I meant like the type of exercise somebody does. Like, so if they're, if they're addicted to bar, are they going to really go to? Well, I think that it could open their eyes to something else. Like I know when we did, we did a collaboration with with Cycle Bar in Wellesley. Um, and we actually got like a fair amount of traction, both, you know, their members came to us and our members went to them, but because they saw the benefit of both, um, both, fit, both workouts. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know long-term if it would mean like they'll have memberships at both places necessarily, but Again, I think there's something to be said about building some excitement about it and trying new things. Um, and if there's a, you know, a prize at the end, you know, where everyone donates a raffle item, it might be more incentive to, to take part in like, you know, try a new class, see what happens. Um, I don't know. Just, just throwing it how, out there. How many, how many businesses were featured on the Passport this summer? So there are 24. Okay. And the challenge is, is that, of course, there's many, many more places right. than 24. So, I mean, is, is there a number that, I mean, it becomes too many to include on a passport that it just doesn't? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do more than 24 okay. for one. Um, I think that that's, that was like hands down max. Um but I do think there could be something about doing, you know, like a passport with, you know, five to 10 in each category um, or something like that. But doesn't it seem like it's segregating then? Like, would, like say if you did it by category, then would it be good to mm -hmm. be like, if you get one from each category, you get a raffle or yeah. you know what I mean? Like something along yeah. those lines. So it's not so like just working out or just retail shopping. Uh, yes. I, mean, I was just yes. going to say that if you had category of go to one restaurant, like the passport consisted of three boxes, go to a restaurant, a, um, retail and a, a fitness. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then you don't have to limit it to 24. You could say you can, you, you can go to any of the ones in town, you know, and then yep, you're not. That's limiting. a great idea too. That's a great idea too. Then, then you yeah. just have if you go to those one of, you have to get a, a, you know, get a coffee, get a gift and get a whatever. And then it doesn't have to be even a sit down restaurant. Like when we did a passport here in a different town, it, we, we did it like that it was the category was, is a great idea, but I don't think you do just want to limit, like you have to go to five workouts to get a thing. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, and then nope. you can open it to anyone, any, any Needham business period. Yeah. And then yeah. if it was done or, or somehow if, if mm -hmm. that doesn't happen or if you if it's a program that's done all the time and then you rotate the businesses, then people know that there is kind of always a passport going on for like a certain period of time. And then it rotates and then there'll be new businesses that are involved. And then there's mm -hmm. consistency of this is what Needham does. You know, they have a, a passport program and if you didn't do this one you'll you'll do the next one and there'll be new businesses to to, to rotating through mm -hmm. yeah that's a great idea we'd have to know who's gonna do it like we couldn't just be like walking like so when we did it during christmas there were some businesses that chose not to participate but then they started x and off like making their own boxes and stuff like we'd have to know who's participating because if there's a prize at the end it mm -hmm. really can only get a check from somebody who is participating and contributing to the grand prize. I Absolutely. You know. But again, is that going to be what we're known for then? The passport thing? Is that going to be like a yearly tradition? Like, is that what we want? Or I don't know. In some ways, I think that that's a better 
a better opportunity to bring the ultimate goal is to increase business. I, I do think, although the strolls are, I think, a nice community event, I think the passports are actually bringing dollars into people's businesses. So I, I've had customers ask me if we're going to do it, you know, is there one coming for the holiday season? And we I, actually, to I did too over the summer. People would say, you know, they do in this during the holidays because that's when they shop downtown more, you know. Right. So I think that that, I, I personally think that's a better program to bring money into into people. Do we know anybody who it's, could create an app? But then then it's not fair for people who don't understand that. So I, I just want to pipe in for a sec. Um, doing the passport, the hard copy for at this point in, is very, very easy to just recreate it. I have no problem doing that uh, once we figure out what we want to do. Uh, we did, there is an app online uh, that I have to check out. We, we tried that again. I keep on referring to Lexington, but we did try it up here and there are ways to do it. It exists. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and we could try to go down that road. We didn't get a lot of participation on the app side of things. Uh, when we last tried it up here in the summertime, could have been timing, it could have been promotion, could have been a lot of things, but if we want, I can get that information and email the group, uh, about whether this is valuable for us. Basically it's a QR code. Somebody, somebody scans it type of thing. Um, yeah. it's a, it's it'll, not, help, not. it'll probably keep costs down too if we can pull that off. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can. I don't think we can do away with the paper though, because you have older customers that aren't gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Is there so, yeah, also we, a way? Oh, sorry. The, we we did the combination of, of both of them, uh, and uh, I think that just that whole program that we tried in the summer was just so so. Uh, up in, up here. Uh, the one that that bar three put together, I think, worked out well. I, I'm suppose. I'm not sure. If, did you ever gather numbers on those, Liz, about uh, how many were passed in or not? Yeah, we got like about 120 that came back, which was, I mean, a pretty a pretty good amount, honestly, from everyone that participated. Yeah. Um, and the two winners were thrilled. I mean. Yeah. And again, like we didn't, when we, when we launched it, we didn't really necessarily launch it to be like, oh, this is going to be a huge moneymaker by any means. That wasn't our intention. It was more just like, let's do something to get people excited about businesses reopening and need them again. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's a combination of all these things, brand recognition, everything um, yeah. between what, what the chamber can do, what, what Amy can, can do from her office and what we can do as off, offline here with this stuff. Uh, it's all together that that's going to help. None of it's going to be perfect, uh, but let's just throw one, throw, throw something together. I definitely am all for pre uh, Thanksgiving, the month of November. I know this is the 13th, but we can get something together within two or three weeks easily uh, because we're just going to re redo something that we had or just call a different name. So uh, the earlier, the better. Media is all about supply shortages people understand that they can't wait till christmas eve to shop so let's let's shop early i do wonder if there's a way to like include um i think people are kind of um liking the passport idea because it's encouraging visiting multiple places it's um it does bring actual traffic to the stores um i just wonder if there's liz liz you had mentioned um you know potential digital version like is that easier to implement um or also somehow encouraging a social element to it um so maybe there is a way to um, you know, if you have a hard copy, you know, a core amount of, you know, businesses that would work with the paper copy, is there another offshoot way to include more businesses, number one, by a hashtag, something really simple that, you know, however many pictures you hashtag, like those are entries. You had to obviously have visited a business, but just encouraging, the, again, those customers talking about where they have been in Needham because um, those people who are paying attention on those platforms, it's so valuable to see. Like, you know, when I'm online and I'm like, oh my gosh, like somebody posted, the, the visual is so important. Like that cute gift they bought at Proud Mary, like that's so different than Proud Mary saying like, you know, like come see us or their own mm -hmm. photo. Wondering if there's a way to integrate that element somehow that's easy to implement and clear to understand from customers. <laughs> What yeah. if we made it an incentive, and I do have to go soon because the store is opening, but what if we made it an incentive that, you know, yes, they can get a passport, but then they also, if they post something that they buy, that gives them an extra. Yeah. 
the next entry or something yeah something like yeah. that up to the stores to keep track of that so like if somebody yes. posted and they tagged me on it i have to i have to keep track of them getting an extra entry yep. like whether we have like little tickets and we create that entry right away and like put it somewhere that we can hand it in at the end of the um challenge yeah the other the the, la the other thing I was thinking of is the welcome back signs that you guys had for us that we put in our windows. I'm wondering if like whatever business is participating in the passport program, if we could have like a specific sign so that people knew which businesses were participating in the passport program. I feel like, I mean, I know when I was driving around town, when I would see those welcome back signs, like it kind of, it made me smile. It, it like, it just made my heart happy, honestly. So if there was like, you know, uh, something that, that we could get for any business that's participating so that clients and customers know like, okay, this business is participating in this passport program. Um, and maybe then they take a picture, you know, outside or post, you know, outside the store or something like that. Um, sure. Actually, Amy, would I be able to share my screen? Cause I would like to tell this group that some of you may have already received the new version of the welcome back sign that the chamber has produced. And um, Bob helped me hand some out. I handed some out. Some of my MBA committee handed some out. But Paula Jacobson's daughter got married on Saturday and she loves to go into stores. So I'm a little slow in getting everyone um, assigned. They are all of it. They're available at Louise's, um, Louise Condon's re uh, real estate office. But if I could just show you, this yeah, is the version. Okay, we, this is the version we have going out now. Um, and it's for people who, uh, Lori, I know you have the sign already. Bob Stark has a sign. Um, Tiffany was away, so she didn't get Proud Mary theirs. But um, here's what we wanted to get up as soon as possible. And some people are putting, taking down the welcome back and putting this up instead. But um, if there is another sign, we do have this connection with staples that we're willing to they're, they're very big into supporting small business so if you do have another messaging we're happy but if if you want this sign sooner than we get it to you please stop in at louise's um and uh if you want to just ping me on i'll get you yours directly i have some in my car so just fyi i'm glad i had the chance to share um we do have a new phase of the messaging that's good Okay, so it sounds like um, everybody's interested in pursuing the passport um, program, um, that that perhaps makes more sense and would generate more awareness and consistent you know, shopping versus you know, one day holiday stroll kind of event. Um, do we uh, want to schedule, um, and I can shoot out an email, but just a follow-up meeting to, to continue on this momentum. It's already you know, Wednesday the 13th, but I'm thinking, you know, um, early next week, just to sort of regroup on this passport um, idea? I think so. Okay. Sure. And uh, Amy, uh, yep. the stamp, stampme.com is the app that we end up using. Stampme.com? Uh, yeah. It's a loyal, it's a basically, I kind of searched uh, loyalty program apps, and that's the yep. one we, we end up uh, falling into. We, the only thing we did wrong here, we had the same QR code at all businesses, so we couldn't understand who went to where. So I would set up a, a, a different variety of them or different deals, so to speak. So I want to explore that a little bit more if we go down that road. Okay. I, um, I, yeah, I had a, just a question. I don't know if people want to, if there's um, benefit to coordinating hours for the, for the season. I know we all have different hours, which... I mean, quite honestly, sometimes I benefit like when closet exchange isn't open and we are and vice versa. In some ways, it's probably it benefits us, but each of us. But but anyway, like we're open on Sundays. We've had some great Sundays. Uh, I don't know if we want to, you know, think about being on a Thursday night. Um you know, so I did that last year, and I'm certainly happy to help coordinate that again this year. I think, you know, I, I probably sound like a broken record, but the the number one, um, you know, thing that is going to be important to make sure something like that can be successful is consistency. So not only, um, you know, getting a core group of, of retailers and, and to agree, I mean, the restaurants are going to be open late anyway, but if we say businesses are going to be open late on Thursday evenings, well, then we need you know, the majority of them to actually commit and, and stay open 
late as opposed to um, sort of doing it, you know, if they if they can. And I, I totally totally understand that, um, you know, having help in the stores is, is a huge challenge right now. But because my point being is that if we're if we're going to do it, everybody needs to commit to it and actually stay open as opposed to you know if you're going to stay open till seven or eight o'clock, actually commit to staying open that late is. You don't have anybody walk in the store, um, you know, after 630, then you close, you know, close the door and turn the lights off. It, it only takes that one person to show up thing. I thought they were going to be open late and then, you know, not, not come back. So I'm um, happy to do that, but I think we just need a core group of, uh, of retailers to commit to doing something like that. Um, Amy, one other thing, cause I know people have to jump off. Um, so I totally, I'm not involved with the Wellesley expansion so much. And I think if you all had time, if I can share my screen one more time, we are doing a student discount um, program with the Wellesley merchants. I don't attend those meetings, but this is something that they asked for to engage Wellesley College and the other um, area colleges. And so it is a QR based, QR code based program. A student comes in and uses the QR and it opens up all the, um, discounts that the merchants are making available to students and if you're a chain and it's open to non-chamber members but if you are a chamber member you get your logo you basically build your you know it's your member profile that's being fed in otherwise you just do get listed as part of the promotion we wanted to be as inclusive as possible so if this is something if you want to take a look before you meet next wednesday if there's some version of this that you think would work um in any way to help with the passport program um, we did do quite a bit of research on the QR code thing. And again, I was, at, I was not a part of that conversation, but take a look. It's under, um, you have to go to our region. It's just on our Wellesley page. And then it's a um, link over to the right and it's student discount program. But then Greg is including it in his um, email blast. You know, we tease it. Uh, again, though, this is not where students come to learn about, you know, it, the chamber is not a go-to place for students to be like, oh, let's see what the student, so it's a matter of the businesses being able to list what they have going there, um, but there's quite a bit of effort on the part of the merchants and the colleges to get the awareness around the student program as well, but that's the kind of thing we research, and that's what we are able to launch from our team, so if you want to take a look, we're happy to duplicate that effort. <laughs> So in, in, to wrap up, to make things easy, do we, um, can we say next Wednesday again at nine o'clock, I'll send an email out to um, remind folks. Sure. Also, one, one quick thing, um, just to pick up on what Amy was saying about the late nights, maybe just focus on, instead of trying to do a late night every week, maybe just one late night and promote that. Just an idea. You know, just one month, month. maybe one a month. Or one of my, yeah, leading up to the holidays instead of putting the pressure on every single you know week to have a late night for the stores. Just an idea. I don't. It might. At that point, Karen, I um, at the general store, we didn't really get very much um, traction around this, and I think it was poor marketing on our part. But um, we had done a private, um, so we let people make an appointment to come in. It was more COVID related because we wanted people to be able to like shop without the fear of COVID, if people are still having a lot of concerns around that, I'm not sure, but if you're, you guys are seeing that, but um, that could be an option too, is to schedule it so that you know, if you're gonna be open, you'll have someone there and they're gonna shop. Right. That goes back to the coordination with, uh, yes. with the PTAs or whomever mm -hmm. saying, okay, this is whatever elementary school's night and this is the other elementary school's night or the middle school's night, whatever the parents somehow it's finding that influencer. That is the key. Uh, and I don't know how we how we figure that out, but that we maybe that we can... already we do that every year with all the different schools. We just, okay. we just do um each school has an individual night. We didn't do it last year because of COVID, because we were only literally allowed to have three people in our store. So I we did it online instead. And they work good. I don't know. I haven't, I, I don't, we haven't talked yet about doing it this year, Karen, have we? No. Have you talked to any of the people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they, I mean, they're good, they're good, but we, we end up giving back to the school. So I don't know if there's a way we want to be charitable about it if we did something, like did it more instead of just being a proud Mary, need, um, uh, Elliot school night, make it 
the whole town Elliot School Night and you give back, a, you know, again, it comes down to discounting and right. like, that's the whole thing, you know, so that's something you guys have to think about. Okay. All right, so um, this next Wednesday at nine work for folks? Yes. Yes. Okay. I will send out an email later today um, as a follow-up in the, in the Zoom link. But um, this, is, this has been really helpful. Um, and I'll have more information to share on Small Business Saturday by next Wednesday as well. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you.